Welcome to the discussion today. My guest is Chris Howard, the Vice President of Federal Sales for Nutanix. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Our topic is enterprise IT, how agencies can shift their approaches, their thinking, their workforces toward a modern IT infrastructure. We know agencies are spending about 75% of their IT budgets on legacy systems, commonly known as operations and maintenance, or O&M. Only about 25% of those budgets are on modernization efforts, commonly known as DME, development, modernization, enhancement. So let's start with the problem first. What is it about today's IT infrastructure that's problematic, and why is there this big push for modernization? Because obviously it's working, right? Yeah, it works to a certain extent. Uh, the, the government has, uh, as you stated, 75% of their budget allocated to maintain legacy systems. So there's also a need and a, and a requirement to consolidate data centers, make data centers more efficient. Um, but there's no budget to allow that. If 75% of your budget is spent on maintaining legacy, how are you supposed to modernize and make it more efficient and, and take in innovation into your data center? So that's a big challenge. So what happens is uh, you see the government pretty much just maintain the status quo. Um, day in and day out, they have people that are managing the same technology that's been in place for sometimes 10, 15, 20 years almost. Now, there's been some improvements to that technology, but at the end of the day, um, the amount of money that's allocated for IT is just not enough to give them the, the ability to move to a more modern data center. So it's, it's a big challenge, but you, know, you have the government trying to do some things around that with Fatara, and there's been some OMB, um, um, some statements made by OMB recently where they're going to allocate a fund or create a pool of money to allow for this modernization and, and the ability to bring innovation into the data center. So hopefully some of those things will have a positive impact over the next year or two, but it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but it's something that we deal with every day. And, and uh, Nutanix as a company, that's what we, uh, we try to accomplish when we go meet with the customers, is give them an, a clean and efficient manner to modernize their data center. And obviously what you're talking about there is the IT modernization fund, $3.1 billion in the fiscal Correct. 2017 request. Mm -hmm. The key word here is request. We'll see if it actually comes through. But in the meantime, it doesn't mean agencies can just sit there and wait. I mean, part of the issue here is the the ability to serve citizens differently, to serve citizens better. And if you are working on a legacy and older set of technologies, you're not going to be able to serve citizens as well. So talk a little bit about what the effectiveness, the efficiency, the sustainability, why these legacy architectures are not all of these things, and how Nutanix and other types of technologies can move agencies toward a more efficient, effective approach. Yeah, so today with the, the legacy technologies, it uh, takes a lot of manpower to, uh, to support it. It's very costly. Um, it doesn't scale very well. There's a lot of problems um, as I look at the IT infrastructure and try to pinpoint what exactly do we need to do to move forward. So, I mean, what Nutanix does is we try to give them a, a much easier product to implement, one that is obviously uh, lower cost up front, but even more important, it's lower cost to maintain. So it takes less people to manage. It's, it's more efficient when it comes to scaling and growing the technology. So the government's always been in a position where where they buy a lot of things in bulk up front. And, and then slowly over a two, three year period or four years, um, they try to grow into it, but there's never any positive ROI on that. So um, you know, what we try to do is, is basically help them get from point A to point B by spending less money up front, spending less money overall to maintain it, but also free up some of the manpower uh, that traditionally are spent you know, managing all these different components of a three-tiered architecture so that they can be more efficient around delivering applications, end user experience, give their customers better SLAs. Um, so th they all fall into that efficiencies bucket, but that's kind of the, the pattern of, of how we sell and how we support our government customers. No, no, we're going to talk about the workforce a little later in mm -hmm. the show. So we we can talk about that, the shifting resources, if you will. But one of the things that you brought up is this th three-tiered architecture. You brought up this idea of scalability, agility. A lot of those things you hear when you talk about cloud or, or virtualization. Talk a little bit about where those two technologies fit in with this broader idea of uh, this IT infrastructure modernization effort. Yeah, so just real quick, just to kind of define, three-tier architecture is simply traditional servers, some sort of storage fabric, and then a storage area network or SAN. So three different components, um, three different skill sets, so a lot of training is required in each one of those. But really the biggest problem with that is um, 
you have to maintain some sort of equilibrium across those three platforms. As you upgrade one, you have to upgrade all. As you patch one, you have to make sure the patches are, are up to date across all. So um, a lot of challenges when maintaining that. But what we try to do and what we're, our goal is, is we're trying to bring the characteristics of the cloud. Everybody, um, you know, as far as the cloud's concerned, you think of Google, Amazon, um, certainly Microsoft, AWS. A lot of the federal government has a mandate or is looking at going to the cloud. But Unfortunately, it's it's a it's a um, a challenge because of security or because of certain uh, requirements around the data. Um, so we want to bring the characteristics of those pl public cloud companies to the federal data center. So what do I mean by that? I mean, we want to bring the efficiencies, the scalability, the ease of management. When somebody goes to the cloud, they don't care what the plumbing is of the cloud. They just want their applications to work and they want it to be seamless. And then they want their people to get the, the service that they're, they're signing up for. So if we can help them um, bring those characteristics to their own data center, but also give them a bridge to, to help them get to that public cloud, because eventually they will get there. Um, so we just need to give them a transition period of how we can support them locally until at the time when they want to go to the cloud. And even when they do go to the cloud, it may end up just being um, some of their applications. Um, it could be just certain pieces or components of their infrastructure. So we want to give them the ability to move back and forth in a seamless manner without having to do things around changing the applications or, or moving necessarily all of their data to the public cloud. So if we can help them just bridge that transition, then I think it's a, su a success. And, and what's interesting be when you talk about it's not just a turn on, turn off. Let's move everything to the cloud. It's not a lift and shift because so many times applications are not ready to move to the cloud or can't support a cloud type of uh, infrastructure. Right. One of the things that's emerging from this is this idea of hyper-converged infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a big word, and, and mm -hmm. let's explain what that is and how that fits into this discussion. Sure. So hyper-converged is basically we take those three tiers, traditional compute, the fabric, and the storage area network, and we consolidate it into a very small footprint, purpose-built virtualization appliance that has the compute, the storage, uh, the network uplinks, as well as um, the you know, distributed file system and the virtualization layer that can support um, all of the data. So hyperconverged is more of a Lego block versus racks and racks and racks. We always say we like to scale in two rack U increments versus whole racks like the three tiered. So that's basically the simple definition of hyperconverged. And what it allows basically is, as you said, all those three tiers combined into one Lego block, and that that's the simplification, but also a, a, a opens the door to agility as well. Absolutely. Because of why? Talk, talk a little bit about that. So, you know, a big problem that, uh, that exists today in the federal data centers is new requirements are always coming in. So the requirements for more and more IT and storage and all that exists today, but the scalability of those existing infrastructures is, is very difficult. Um, really, you manage it as a silo. So if you have a three-tiered architecture supporting one use case and you want to add in another use case into that environment, it's basically creating another silo, which takes more manpower and all that, those types of things. What we do from a hyper-converged perspective is provide the scalability where if they want to add more uh, requirements into the data center, a new workload or a new use case, they simply just plug in another 2U appliance or plug in another, uh, even down to a single node increment. Um, so the cost to scale is is incredibly low compared to these uh, traditional offerings. And the ability to scale, it takes minutes instead of weeks or months. So um, as these new use cases and requirements come on board, I mean, in a traditional infrastructure, you're literally talking weeks or months to, to get that environment up and running, whereas today, they can simply grow in a matter of five, 10 minutes. So it creates a lot of efficiencies, not only around the scalability, but at the same time, it's less footprint, lower cooling, power cost, data center footprint. So um, that's really what we try to support. All right, and then, and then we're going to talk about cybersecurity, but we're going to take right. a quick break. Yeah. You're listening to the panel discussion, Clearing the Path Toward an IT Modernization on federalnewsradio.com and 1500 AM.